September when we decided we had to, I was like, we gotta go somewhere with people. And so that's how we found Highlands. And it was just really good to be like in worship. Like I remember sitting in the chairs, we were in the front row, <laughs> which was a little overwhelming, but we were in the front row and I was like, it's like, I haven't talked to God in <laughs> since March because I haven't been around humans and I haven't heard worship and Spotify is just not the same as somebody singing, you know? And so it was just really good and it got me really excited about <sighs> what Highlands stood for because I've been in some toxic church environments and so I know that there are some churches that say they love Jesus but don't love people well. They talked about small groups and I told my husband soon as we can we got to get in a group we got to meet some people and so we joined just like a random freedom small group and I didn't really even know what that meant, but it was the one on the days that we could meet. That was awesome. And I remember when they said we were gonna split up and do boys in one room and girls in the other room. And my husband was like, I don't, I, let's, I changed my mind, let's don't do this. Cause he really likes to sit next to me and I'll like do some translating when we have to, you know? So he knows what's going on and he felt super uncomfortable about the idea of being with all these guys he didn't know. I was excited about it because I like to talk to everybody. But <laughs> he was not excited about it. And I think like the first like two weeks he was not excited about it. But our group leaders did such a good job of making him feel welcome. So like there's a book you have to read and I told them, I was like, there's no need to get him a book because he's not reading a book in English. There's no way. And Tiffany was like, I bet we can get a book in Spanish. And I was like, really? <laughs> and so she like talked to whoever and got him a PDF version of the book on Spanish so he could read it on his phone. And internally I was like, he's really just doing this for me because he doesn't really want to be here. And so I would like tell him every Tuesday, okay, remember, you have a chapter to read. And he'd be like, oh, okay. And then like as the weeks progressed, he'd be like, oh, I already read my chapter. And I was like, oh, really? <laughs> Without me like encouraging you? And he's like, yeah. And then like we would be on the way home and he'd be like, well, here are all my thoughts about what we talked about. And I was like, you're like engaging. And so that was like such a, encouraging surprise that he got invested and meanwhile I was fully aware that I had lots of trauma and lots of hurt towards God that I hadn't worked through and so that wasn't a surprise but it was crazy how quickly our group felt comfortable enough to talk about that stuff and I've always been like the, the, the good Christian person who knows all the right answers. And so I'm fully capable of participating without sharing any vulnerability. And my group was really good about lovingly saying, is that what you believe or is that the right answer? And they didn't force me to talk, but they would just look at me and say, you have something else? Do you want to talk about that? And I'd be like, okay. And so I would just be like crying, sharing like all of my hurt about how I didn't feel like God loved me and I didn't feel like God cared about me. And they would just be like, okay, let's talk about it. And at no point did anybody say, okay, are you sure you're a Christian? Are you sure you love God? Cause you kind of sound like a crazy person. But they just opened up an opportunity for me to talk about all of that. And then we're really honest about their own struggles. Cause I kind of was expecting that everybody would be like, okay, wow, sorry you're struggling with that. But instead I had group leaders who said, you know, I've had that thought too. And I feel it. And you're allowed to be mad at God, that's okay. And I had never been given permission to be mad at God. And so it was just like a really, amazing healing opportunity because I got to be vulnerable and I didn't have to 
concluded. Like, at the end of the, the day, I didn't have to say, but I'm good now. Like, I could leave and still be mad, and that was okay. And so, I just spent these weeks, like, digging deeper into how I had been hurt by relationships and by God and how all that had built up these walls. And I just watched my sweet little small group leaders, like, walk with me as I dug through that. I remember the day before, I told him, I was like, okay, how are you feeling? And he's like, oh, I've just been praying that God will really speak to me and really reveal some stuff to me. And I was like, wow, cool, <laughs> okay, great. And so he did and he, like, my husband really enjoyed it. And he made friends with our small group and we still talk to those people. I mean, we're getting together this weekend. Um, to help one of the girls in our small group. And it's just really cool to see how we were able to break through those barriers that I had, you know? Cause like my husband had relational barriers that he was like, I'm not gonna be friends with you people. We're so different. And now he's friends with them. And I had these barriers with like, I don't trust anyone enough to be vulnerable. And I feel like they allowed me an opportunity to do that.